station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And the International Space Station is ready for the event. Collect Spacecom, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CollectSpace.com. How do you hear me? I got you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Loud and clear. Um, great to talk to you this morning, Sonny. Thanks for taking a few minutes of your time out to, uh, to answer some questions. Um, and to jump directly into that, uh, you've been on board the ISS for about three months. If, and if I did my math correct, I think you're, you're within four days of your 100th day aboard, so congratulations. Uh, by now, does the station feel like home, or are you staying at someone else's home, or is it a really unusual hotel, or are you camping out at work inside a laboratory? Uh, it's definitely uh, our home at this moment in time. Um, you might see my hair has grown a little bit longer. I think I'm getting used to uh, being up here, and uh, the long hair is, is good with me. So I think I think it's it's our home at this moment in time. You know, we have our little things scattered here and there, and we know where they are. And um, I think we have to clean up before the next crew comes here, just like when you have visitors at your house. You want to probably take this weekend or the weekend before they arrive to clean up. Um, the TV show, The Big Bang Theory, recently had one of its characters fly to their version of the space station, which, to their credit, looked very much like where you're floating now. Uh, one of the comedic storylines story was that the character desired gravity after being weightless for so long. Have you experienced that? Um, for example, do you ever crave sinking into a chair? No, actually, I love being up here and I love floating around. And I think, you know, the mindset really is, you know, it's not going to last for every, ever. So, uh, um, you know, I think you take an advantage of flying around as much as possible. There are subconscious things that catch you off guard, though, you know, and it took a little while to get used to falling asleep without laying down on a bed or having a pillow. Um, still, every now and then, you know, you take a a bag of nuts and go like this, you know, like hold it up in the air to fall in your mouth and that's not going to work. So some of those little subconscious things catch you off guard. But, um, you know, being in microgravity and flying around in space is priceless. And uh, I mean, I think uh, we're cherishing every moment we have of it. You'll be on space station until next month, and that'll be just over four months. And you previously spent six months aboard in, on a prior expedition. Um, NASA and its international partners have now approved uh, for a future crew to spend a year up there. From your perspective, what are the challenges you think that crew will face? Would you feel comfortable spending a year on station? You know, I, I would love to spend a year on the space station. It is a great place to live and work. And, you know, since this uh, subject has come up and uh, I've heard a little bit about it and heard some of the science objectives and things like that that are associated with it, um, you know, the International Space Station is a great place to live for a year. There's lots to do here. There's science experiments. You know, there's working on the house. You know, if every now and then something breaks. Uh, there's crews, and it's dynamic, you know, changing crews. And so it would be really a, a good place to do that and if we're looking for the biological human side of it what happens uh, to the human body over that long of a time you know this is the perfect place to do that and we have all the monitoring here to figure out um, you know every step of the way what happens so yeah I would love to do it I know there's other folks in the office who would love to do it there's folks all over the world who would love to do it um, staying in space and looking at the planet for a year this close would be perfect well, on the subject of spending years in space, November 2nd will mark 12 years of continuous human presence on the International Space Station. Um, what, in your opinion, have we gained from the cumulative experience as it, as it applies to the future of space exploration? Wow, that, that's a great question. You know, I was um, lucky enough to be at the launch of the first expedition crew to the International Space Station. And so I can tell you just from personal relationships with people and uh, partners from all the different agencies, uh, we've come a long way. We've, uh, you know, of course, we've trusted each other before in building the space station and throughout the whole process while it's being built. Uh, that's That has just been, uh, you know, capitalized on for the last decade. Um, as crew members, we've got to know each other really well. Uh, as, as international partners for sharing information and engineering ideas, learning from each other.
how other people tackle a problem. Um, I think that has just been, you know, uh, um, accelerated throughout this program. I think it's a role model program for many, many other international programs on the ground. And with that, you know, one of my own personal feelings is, you know, when you leave the planet, you sort of leave the planet as a human being. You don't necessarily leave it as a guy from this country or that country. And so hopefully, uh, you know, when we're going to other planets a little bit away from Earth, we'll be leaving as human beings. With regards to your time up on board already, uh, you recently had a SpaceX Dragon capsule and it's now famous ice cream delivery. And you and your crew are due a Halloween Day delivery by a Russian Progress spacecraft. Given that, were there any other surprise treats or tricks you found while unpacking the Dragon or treats you're hoping to find on the Progress when it arrives October 31st? Uh, well, that's interesting. Halloween is, happens to be one of my favorite holidays just because it's a lot of fun and pe people act goofy and, uh, you know, there's always candy involved. And so that's uh, it's, it's exciting. So we're hoping um, that uh, we open the door and there'll be a little bit of treats in the progress. Um, but uh, sort of as a little bit of a surprise for me, I got a little bit of a costume from my folks for my birthday because my birthday happens to fall on uh, uh, National Talk Like a Pirate Day, so I think we'll uh, we'll all set we're all set for costumes up here for Halloween, and hopefully we'll get some candy. Looking forward to seeing that. Um, I understand you're preparing now for a spacewalk, your second during this expedition, but this one to repair an ammonia leak was not something you anticipated before launching. Uh, knowing the normal procedures that go through preparing for a spacewalk when training on the ground, is it substantially more difficult an undertaking to get ready for while in space? And how challenging is this repair task set out for you? Well, you know, again, a, a good question. Um, you know, the, it, it takes a lot of time to prepare for these things, but luckily there's a team of people on the ground that are doing most of the legwork to get it done. Um, you know, going into the NBL, other uh, astronauts are in the neutral buoyancy lab going through the procedures that the uh, EVA folks have developed and thought about for a long time about how they might handle something like this. Uh, we have the luxury of actually looking out the window, the cupola window, and seeing where our work site is and seeing how we might get there, as we call it, translate there. And, uh, and then with our group of folks on the ground, we review all of the procedures and understand what we'll have to do. Um, we also have equipment up here that we can sort of practice on inside some of the connectors. Um, and so we have a really good understanding about what the EVA is supposed to be like. But, um, you know, I always say it's not over till it's over. And uh, it seems like there's more things up here that surprise you than not. So our skills-based training, I think, is the, big, the biggest benefit that has got us ready for any type of surprise that we might have to handle and tackle out there, along with, the, of course, the talented group of folks on the ground who are thinking of every little contingency that might happen. You're right now commanding a crew of three, but you'll soon be joined by another three crew members. How eager are you for their arrival, and are there benefits for having just three people aboard the station and having that whole large laboratory to yourself? Well, it's sort of quiet up here, which is sort of nice, uh, with just three. No, we're really, seriously, we're really looking forward to the next group group coming up here. Uh, it always adds a little more dynamic uh, atmosphere when people are flying around. You know, uh, right now only two of us are living up in Node 2. Soon it will be four, so that means uh, a lot of traffic back and forth. But that makes it fun. Um, being, being a crew of three was really nice also, of course. It sort of calmed everything down, made things a little bit more relaxing. Um, uh, even though we still had some dynamic ops. But we're, we're ready for our, our guests and the new residents of the International Space Station, Kevin, Oleg, and Evgeny. It's going to be great to have them up here. And um, like I said, we're cleaning house, making sure it's all ready for them. And as my time here runs out, let me ask, you know, launching with Kevin Ford and his crew are also 32 fish for Jax's aquatic habitat. Um, reading your blog, you seem to like checking in on the spiders that are now earthbound on SpaceX's Dragon. Are you anticipating the fish will take uh, the place of your uh, unofficial pets aboard the space station? 
Well, as a matter of fact, we were just looking at the, we call it the AQM, the aquarium, over in the Japanese uh, module yesterday as Aki was setting it all up, getting it all ready. So, and I was asking him all sorts of questions about it. So I'm, uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for uh, animals. And so I'll be really excited to see them and see how, you know, they change and they grow or how they develop and, and what we can learn from them. Because, uh, you know, the part of them coming up here is, is, of course, not just for our entertainment, but they are a science experience. It will be very interesting to see their skeletal growth patterns and what happens with their muscles up here and could, and, you know, enlighten us to some of the things that are going on with our own selves. So, yeah, I'm psyched that they'll be here, and you betcha you'll, you'll hear about them in my blog. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time today. It's been great talking to you and seeing you in space. Thank you. It was always fun. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Collect Space. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio comms.